The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Folks, welcome to the May 15th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then we'll let any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Sea of green as it relates to the U.S. indices. We've got a couple sectors like the energy sector and the uh, XLY uh, are trading slightly to the downside. But you got the Dow up 235 points. S&P is up 42. NASDAQ 100, 173. Russell's up 16. Semi's up 85. Trendy's up 26. We're going to pick all those apart to try to figure out what they're communicating to you and I. Gold's up 24 bucks. Silver's up 80 cents. Lace recruit is basically flat. It's down 9 cents right now. Natural gas is flat as well and a 30 treasury up one point and four ticks she's trading out at 117.30 now our leader in the clubhouse dollar wise the upside micro strategy 84 bucks six and a half percent super micro 69 bucks eight percent 34 bucks for monday.com doesn't monday know it's wednesday it's a 19 percent rally there nvidia up 30 bucks three percent service now 25 bucks three and a half percent to the downside gamestop I don't even know why I even said that. Should have just skipped right past that one. Regenerin Pharmaceuticals off nine. Albi Marl's down seven. West Pharmaceuticals down five. Uh, Vertra is down five. And Lululemon is down five bucks as well. Sounds like about a lot of fives out there. Of course, I was doing just a little bit of rounding. So let's uh, begin. Where do we want to begin? I'll tell you where we'll begin. We'll start taking a look just simply what's going on around the globe out here. So uh, we can see here in the Dow, the Dow has not attained yet its all-time high. Hasn't gotten back to that. That requires a close above 38, 39. It requires a tick above 39, 889, 05 out there. But take a look at the DAX. This is the daily charts that we're looking at. The DAX is a new all time high today. Uh, not so much for the Australian index. The Nikkei, no. Nikkei made its high back, uh, the, uh, its all time high back in uh, 20, March 21st of 2024. That took out, what, that 1990 high that lasted all the way until uh, recently, if you will. The FTSE is at a new all time high today. The uh, Not the Hang Seng. That's not, neither is a Shanghai. So we got new all time highs today in the SP, I believe the NASDAQ as well right now, uh, the DAX and the, um, and the uh, FTSE, which is really interesting that you've got a war going on over in Ukraine, so on European soil, and they still have these markets at all-time highs. But that's what it, that's what they're doing. We take a look at the uh, daily indices here for the uh, for the U.S. You've got new all-time high today in the S&P. We're at that new all-time high today in the NDX 100. Now, as we mentioned, has a, a ways to go. The same with regard to the Russell. 
Uh, semis aren't even close. Uh, New York Stock Exchange is getting pretty darn close. 18,342.24 is what it needs to do. Transports are not close. The NASDAQ Composite is, and the XAU headed up towards the 145.40 level out there. Now, if we take a look at the S&P 500, price and other currencies out there, obviously in dollars, I haven't moved these things higher yet, but your new all-time high today in terms of U.S. dollars, in terms of yen, in terms of Great British Pound, in terms of the Swedish Corona, in terms of the Swiss franc out there, again, pretty close in terms of the uh, Canadian loony. So that's just a general overview of what's going on. Now let's start to really break this apart and try to figure out what the markets are communicating to us. So for that, we're going to switch over to Stevie's white background charts. And the white background charts, if you give me a moment, we'll start with the equity future contracts. So we take a look at the ES. The ES is going to form bar number nine today. That top says it could form between today and tomorrow. Remember, the uh, TD9 count the high or the low, in this case here we're taking a look at highs, can form on the bar following bar number nine. And I'm going to say that that is a likely possibility, especially at this stage of the game with us being up at session highs. If we take a look at the NQ, it's the same signal as the ES Mini. Right now it's taking on one TD9 count breakdown level at 18.507. Hasn't had any problem there. The next one's up at 18.619. We take a look at the NQ. Bar number nine today. Now, the Dow is going to complete its TD9 count top today. Today is the bar following bar number nine. So for Dow equity futures, whatever the high is today, come six o'clock to tight and continuing as long as you are paying attention to what the futures are doing. If price is trading above that, that would be kind of interesting. In fact, that could be signaling to us that maybe there isn't a top that's forming. However, we go with the patterns that we have right now, and the patterns right now suggest that we should see a top in at least three of the four. The reason I say three of the four is uh, in the scratching of the head out here for Stevie is uh, because yesterday the uh, uh, sell the D point pattern uh, was negated. And it doesn't have a TD9 count. So at the Russell 2000, the equity future contract, really, the Russell 2000 negated it, the Russell 2000 equity future contract, the IWM negated their sell the D point pattern. So each of those are going to need new bearish reversal candles to confirm a sell the D point pattern. So that's what's going on when we take a look at the daily time frame charts. What else does TV have to take a look at? Great question. Oh, let's go take a look at the cash indices out here. Let's try to understand where the cash indices are at with regard to their counts as well. The Dow here, the Dow Cash Index. So unlike the um, Dow Equity Future contract, that is completing its pattern today. Well, the Dow Cash Index is only going to be in bar number nine today. Hmm, something to think about. The S&P 500 only in bar number eight today. So that's why I suggest if we finish up towards a session high, then I don't think that I think that at least in the S&P 500, it'll extend itself. Tomorrow only becomes bar number nine in the cash indice out there. That's the same thing for the NDX 100. Uh, in the case of the Russell, you can see, you know, you gap to the upside, you know, maybe a gap to the downside tomorrow. And that sets up an island top. Um, you know, at or near all time highs uh, for it. That would be a very bearish pattern. The semis are the one that really need their mojo out here. They're the ones that aren't participating yet. They're participating in the rally, but they are not close to a high. Now, when I say they're not close to a high, the semiconductor index, let me get my cursor out here, and I'm going to give you an approximate number. The A to B equals CD pattern is around 5,000, 5,005, somewhere right around there. We're at 49.45. Ideally, you'd like to see a move up there. And then a uh, bearish reversal candle that would form. And then we'd have topping patterns across the board. Even the transports are completing their TD9 count top today. Now, the NASDAQ composite, not so much. A New York Stock Exchange, it could negate and sell the D-point pattern. It could. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. 
While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, try to dig down into some of the equity futures, see what uh, see what some of the intraday signals are showing. We'll get those charts up here momentarily. We'll start with the ES Mini. So let's just start with the shortest term time frame, the 10-minute time frame. We don't see any kind of a topping signal as we speak just yet. Yes, it has a road momentum indicator pattern that needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. The same is true with the 15-minute chart. By the way, yesterday we took a look at the 15-minute uh, time frame chart. And what we did, you and I, we identified that consolidation pattern. We know when there's a consolidation pattern, if the, whichever side breaks, uh, you typically get a move equal to that consolidation. And we most certainly did that. And then we also were able to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. And remember, the move is equal to or greater than the consolidation. So at this stage here, it certainly is the greater than the consolidation. But the point really right now is that there's no topping pattern that's been confirmed or anything with regard to a 15-minute time frame chart. The same is true for 30. The same is true for the 60. The same is true for the two-hour time frame chart. Um, now, on the four-hour time frame chart out here, there is a TD9 count pattern. We are in bar number nine. I believe this is a 2 p.m. close, but let's confirm that. Um, yeah, that's a 2 p.m. close out there. That says you could get a topping pattern between two and uh, today's close. So that's the only one that's got an actual topping signal. Yeah, that's the only one other than the daily, which is in bar number nine out there. Let's go take a look at the end. So, so if you're asking me, do I see some kind of short-term top that somebody wants to go ahead and trade to the short side? Holy shnikes, no. It just isn't out there. Now, we didn't look at a five-minute time frame chart, but 10 minutes is pretty good as a uh, short-term uh, uh, chart out there. So let's go see what's going on inside the NQ. Is it suggesting the same? And I don't know the answer to that. But we are going to uh, find out momentarily. 
So we've got the daily chart to populate, but we're waiting for the other time frames out here. We're just looking to see if there any kind of TD9 count patterns. There may be roads momentum indicator signals out there, but we don't see any kind of bearish reversal candles for those uh, charts on the uh, bottom panel out there. So no top that I see at this moment. How about the counts? Come on, go ahead and populate for us, would you? I have so many different things that are open at this moment in time, and the computer needs an update, and that usually slows things down for whatever reason. So my apology for that, but we'll just do the best we can. So five-hour time frame chart, I don't see any kind of a signal there of a uh, top. Now there's, look, there's A to B equal CD patterns all over the place. So if there were to be a bearish reversal candle for whatever time frame, that would confirm some type of top. The 10-minute NQ, uh, is going to likely form a TD9 count at 11.30. Uh, that pattern would complete at 11.40 out there. Uh, the four-hour chart, much like the ES, is the one with a TD9 count bar. Again, 2 p.m. close there. So it says towards between 2 and uh, today's close. We could see some type of top, but I don't see anything for the other time frames out there. So uh, if somebody's thinking of shorting right now, um, you know, I don't see it. Not just yet, at least, out there. But you can pay attention to the NQ's 10-minute charts. But I probably put the NQ charts and 10 minutes for each of them together. In fact, let's just go take a look at what does that look like out there. Since I said that, I don't think this will take too long to populate, or I hope that it won't. If you give me a moment, we're trying to get back there. Here we got the 10-minute equity future contract. So let's just see what kind of signals we have there. You know, if you're looking for some type of short-term trade out there, you like to see some synergies. What synergy? Well, all four would be nice if they were all doing the same thing out there. When I say all four, I'm referring to ESNQ, YM, and the RTY. Well, we can already see that is not the case. So it's just the ES and the NQ that have the same pattern. You don't see that in the ADAL. And that makes that call of some type of short-term top uh, somewhat um, cautious. But you can get one and pull back to test support at this stage here. 5308 inside the ES, 18568 inside the NQ. And then you got profile levels uh, before uh, that. Um, so that's what's going on. Really, we take a look at uh, what's going on inside the equity future. So we have a few requests that are in. Uh, let's go ahead. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Let's do this now. Let's go take a look at the ETFs out there. And now, because I only have about three requests at this stage of the game. Uh, so let's do this here. We're going to change screens. I, I'm on the uh, the lower eight of the uh, of the uh, sectors inside the S&P 500. But I'm going to change my window over here. We'll come back to these. Let's take a look at what they're doing. We're going to try to come back to these. Can I get, which one is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me see. I might be on the same screen. No, we're good. Okay. So take a look at the SPY. You'll see the SPY upper left-hand chart. Uh, today's going to become bar number nine. TD9 count tops can form on the day following bar number nine. We close with the session highs. That certainly is a suggestion. The same pattern inside the Qs. Uh, bar number nine forming inside the Dow Diamonds. And again, that Russell 2000 in a world of its own. And it, the only pattern that is out here for the Russell, it would require a bearish reversal candle to confirm a uh, sell the D point top. In the case of the XLK, bottom left, you're in bar number nine. The XLB, the healthcare sector, if you're in that, stay in that because you're getting what's referred to as a strong upward momentum move. What do you mean by that, Stevie? TD9 count pattern completed yesterday. Didn't last, did it? Not at all. In fact, price is taking out the 145.09 level. I would suggest to Stevie that price is going to go target its all-time high, and that's up at the February 23rd level. Well, the XLK is the number one sector waiting inside the S&P 500. If that's telling us it wants to move higher, that adds the idea that the S&P 500 or the SPY or the ES Mini is not going to top today. Not very likely. If we take a look at the uh, well, the healthcare sector, I'm sorry, the XLB is a second-weighted uh, sector out there but you know bar number again bar number nine in the xlk that looks to me like it once that higher the xlf financial sector today is only bar number eight out there and so that could easily go on and form another it doesn't really complete the pattern until bar number nine occurs now all bar number nine has to do is close above the close of bar number five out here we're talking about the xlf and that's at 4183 the xlc is finally going to form it appears it will form bar number nine today so that could be identified at the top so before we move from here the xlc says is top worthy the xlf is top worthy the xlb is not and the XLK is. If we take a look at the energy sector, we're going to switch back now and take a look at the XLE and the remaining uh, sectors with inside the S&P 500. Again, just trying to get an overall feel for what the markets are communicating to us. Well, in the case of the XLE, which did trade lower and found support at its TD9 count breakout level, 
and also near its uh, bottom of its profile, 9191. You just have a buy the D point pattern with a consolidation with inside profiles. In the case of the XLY, it doesn't have any kind of a topping pattern out there. If we take a look at the XLI, that is the same thing in its signal. The uh, XLP did complete a or will complete a TD9 count top today, but price needs to close below 76.90 in order for this to gain any kind of downside traction out there. The XLU, the utility sector, has negated its TD9 count top. That says that it wants to head higher out there and continue its miraculous rally big gigantic rally and this is telling us today that it wants to extend that stuff now look it's only 11 26 in the morning so you know anything can happen by day's end but i'm sharing with you the, the message of the market of the charts right now as of 11 26 we take a look at the uh, building sector today's going to become bar number eight so that's got topping potential as does the real estate sector which is going to complete its td9 count top and then we got the smhs which are in bar number eight as we speak today Okay, so that's the overview of the markets out there. Basically, what Stevie is saying is we're not getting any signals to suggest that you just try to jump on the short side, not as of 11.26 in the morning. We come back to this break, we're going to look at IONQ, SWIM, and ARWR, and hopefully more than that. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Let's just start getting into the requests that have come in thus far. The first one from Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. IONQ is the uh, ticker that we're taking a look at it. So when we take a look at IONQ, this still has a TD9 count top out here, Steve-O. The TD9 count top uh, completed on May the 6th, and it's that high that you're watching, that high. It's nine dollars and thirty-three cents. It's tried a couple different times. Yesterday, today, uh, a few days ago, last week, it did on uh, May the 9th. It's been unable to take that level out. Now, not really sure what that means, but I'd say at this stage here, you've got a consolidation, in essence, between that top and the uh, center and the bottom of its. Uh, is that the and the bottom of its profile? And really, you can say the top of its profile, too. So you got a consolidation. Let's make this easy. Between 851 and 921. Um, on a weekly time frame, it doesn't look good. The reason I say it doesn't look good is because you're trading below profile support and a red oscillator and change line. So, um, you know, it's up against resistance. It's fighting resistance on the weekly. It's fighting resistance on the daily. It's still holding up pretty good. But if you see, we see a close below 851, you're likely going to see a move down to 753. So that's what I see, Duncan. Hope that helps you out with regard to that uh, trade. Let's go on to the next one, which is SWIM. And this is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. If we take a look at SWIM, today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, when this last topped out here, which is trading into, by the way, that was back on March the 28th. That was bar number nine of a TD9 count. The very next day, it formed a Roachmentum indicator atop as well. The volume on that swing point is 276,000 shares. So far today, you're in it with 75. 75, two hours of trading. That gets up to about two and a quarter. Uh, two and a quarter is going against 276. So it looks like you're coming into that swing point with light volume. You prefer not to see this test that swing point high and close below it. That swing point high today is at 414. It'll be that same swing point perhaps tomorrow as well. So you could get a TD9 count top. That's topping right where the prior TD9 count top did on lighter volume. And if you get that, that suggests a pullback to support. And support for swim is at about $3.51. Now, the weekly looks pretty nice. Again, we're only halfway, not even halfway through the week, so I'm not going to go measure the volume. We can see on the monthly time frame chart, price is dealing with resistance, which is the top of its profile, and then at $4.22 out there. So I'd say if you close above $4.22 and you uh, negate a TD9 count pattern that is underway out there, Dan, then this thing heads higher, heads higher to where? Great question. I would say the next stop to the upside would be at the 435 to 477 area out there. I know you're liking 945. Well, first, it's got to deal with what it's got to deal with. And those are breakdown levels um, and this TD9 count top that is likely to go ahead and uh, uh, form tomorrow complete on Friday out there. So that's what we see when we take a look at SWIM. Dan, also, I think you wanted to look at ARWR. I didn't have time to completely read the comment, but you did. And Dan is a, an amazing trader when it comes to these biotechs out there. So he just wanted me, I think, to introduce ARWR, Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals, to everybody. And we take a look at Arrowhead. Uh, what this did yesterday is it formed a Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom pattern. It had a nice bull separation candle. And price ran into resistance, which was the top of its profile, 23.77. And now we're trading above that level. So this suggests that this wants to continue to move higher. Now, there is some resistance out here from a few days ago, and this had a uh, kind of a waterfall collapse that was on May the 10th out there. So I'd say resistance is 25.48. And if you can close above that, then you should be moving up. To, well, you got 25... So let's get back to this again. 25.48 would be ideal level for this to close above because then you'd have price trading above the weekly oscillator and change line out there. And that, we haven't seen that take place for many months out there. The last time price was above that was in March of uh, 2024 out there uh, you are you do have support on the uh, monthly time frame so yeah watch that resistance area again that's the high from may the 10th and if you clear that you're up to 2742 that is on arwr and uh 
Yeah, looks pretty good. So I hope that helps you out, Dan, and thanks for introducing that. Uh, Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals to the uh, to the Tigers gang out here. Dan in New York City, and I apologize. I said something negative about GameStop, uh, you know, because – but uh, and Dan wants me to look at GameStop, so I'm sorry. I didn't mean what I said. All I said was I should have just skipped it. Uh, but Dan has taken a long position in there, and he's saying, hey, what should I do? So 33 bucks is where you're long, 33.22. We're trading uh, just slightly below that right now. We're at 33.01. What do you have out there in GameStop? Dano, TD9 count top. That took place yesterday out there. What's that suggest? That suggests a pullback to support. And a pullback to support here would be 2386 out there. So here's what you do. We're trading above your, uh, no, we're not. I put a stop somewhere. We'll look at some intraday charts, see if there's anything out there. Look at that weekly bearish shooting star candle out there. Look at the monthly chart price brand all the way up to its TD9 count breakdown level at 47.99. Yes, it got above that. It was in the 65 level, you know, and then totally gave it up on a TD9 count. So not surprising, right, to see this just act like any other stock out there uh, with regard to its tools and its, its technical savvy and its patterns out there, and that suggests lower price. Now, with regard to uh, GameStop on a 30-minute time frame, what kind of signals do we have here uh price is pulling back into an area where a gap had formed but there's several gaps out there and it's just trading with inside a profile new profile that formed uh, at 11:30. that new profile says if you see a close below 33.10 you're likely headed lower let's take another look at a uh, maybe a 65 minute time frame chart just try to help dan out as much as we can this chart suggests that price may pull back to find support at 2541 to 2754 but in summary here what i'm not saying is that i see any kind of significant bottom that suggests that uh, you'd want to be long a uh, gamestop but i could absolutely be wrong on that but there's the charts there's the patterns out there and i hope that that does help you out and best of luck to you i am pulling for Dan in New York City. Uh, Dan also wanted to take a, uh, a look at the real estate sector. We did mention that that is setting up with a, a short signal out there, and he would, does like to go short uh, this. Now, today is going to complete its pattern. Uh, that's a, a TD9 count top. Now, you gap up there, which is kind of interesting. The weekly chart right now is in a bullish breakout mode, meaning that price is trading above its green oscillator and change line and the top of its weekly profile. And that suggests a move perhaps up to 39.85. And 39.85 is the top of the monthly profile. So if you're going to go ahead and take a short on this, first let's look at an intraday chart. 65 minutes. What do we have out here? Not much. We don't have a signal that says that you should take a short there. Let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart. And don't worry about the oscillator change on. That is set to a different time frame. That is the same with regard to the XLRE for its 30-minute chart. Uh, it, even though it shows a bearish shooting star, if we were to fill in this gap, that candle goes away. So, so no, there's really no, I don't see any kind of top out here on the 30-minute chart uh, yet for the XLRE. So, uh, Here's the thing, if you do take it short on this and price closes above today's high, whatever that is, uh, you're definitely on the wrong side of the trade and you'd go ahead and close that out. Steve Rhodes with TFNM, we come back to this break, we're gonna look at LAC for LB and CNM as Mary for Tim M. Be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, all the indices trading in the uh, green, nearly all the sectors. The XLE is the only one that's down, and it's down by two cents. As we speak, otherwise, all the other ones are trading the upside. We're taking a look at ticker symbol LAC. And uh, LAC trade out of $4.45. It does have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. But it's got trouble. It's got trouble up ahead, which are pro profile levels, uh, 495, five and a quarter. It's really just been trading sideways, not doing a whole heck of a lot, uh, Lee, out there. Um, if price were to close below... The low for May 2nd, 4.30, I would get out of Dodge. Oh, you're looking for a long entry out here. So let's see here. The swing point, that swing point has volume of 4.1 million shares. Today you're back. You're already back with 2 million shares. So And you're trading into that swing point. So uh, if it closes below 4.54 today, then the possibility exists. Well, first, it increase the odds that the low of that swing is going to get tested, and that low is at 430. That could be an entry point out there. It would really be dependent upon volume. The weekly chart says we're trading below profile, so that's not necessarily a good thing out there. But the monthly chart's got a TD9 count and a wave number seven bottom. So watch to see how that low gets tested. And then how that low gets tested, if it's with light volume, uh, then you have a, and then that Rhodes momentum indicator signal is still in place out there. Then you have kind of an ideal trade to take a long if you would like, because you would close out that trade with a close below that low. So it would give you the best reward risk. But I'd still wait to see how that low gets tested. And that says wait at least until tomorrow out there. So I hope that helped out with regard to Lithium America Corp out there. Uh, we've got a request for Tim M. Uh, Tim would like to take a look at ticker symbol CNM out there, not CNN, but CNM, which is Core and Main Inc. And uh, Tim is looking for an entry position out there. Well, that entry position, that entry position was a TD9 count bottom on April 22nd. The sell position, well, that took place out here on May 6th. That was a TD9 count top. That just simply led to a sideways move for 
uh, four days out there, and that pattern got negated. It's looking pretty positive right now. Price is trying to take out a prior high that was a top on April the 4th, and the volume there on that candle session was 2.9 million shares. Right now, you're taking that out with 419,000 shares, so it's going to take that out with light volume. Now, I don't know if we'll take it out or if that's going to continue to act as resistance. If it acts as resistance, that's at 6083, then you're likely to see a pullback out there, and where would be support? It could be at the bottom of the profile, which was something that formed yesterday, was tested yesterday at 58.47. If we look at CNM for a, uh, a weekly time frame chart, uh, this thing looks pretty bullish. Now, it is taking on a prior swing point that had volume of 12.5 million shares. Halfway through the trading week, we're only at three. So it's also taking that out with light volume. That's okay. It can still do that. And the monthly chart looks very bullish without any kind of a, a topping signal. This thing has been a rocket ship ever since it formed that Roachman to Indicator bottom back in 2023 out there. I mean, this has really only had one monthly pullback of any significance out there. So you're looking for an entry point, Tim. I'd say other than playing some type of momentum move to the upside, which I could totally get in looking at these charts out there, um, wait to see today's activity because it's coming up to that uh, swing point on that daily basis with light volume see if that gets taken out out there and wait for some kind of pullback to some type of support which right now is 5847 so that's the best that i've got for you uh when it take when we take a look at core in maine but keep looking at it um you know keep observing it even on the intraday charts i don't have any kind of a topping signal as we speak just yet let's go on and take a look at ibrx this is for bob in spokane and uh, IBRX, I'm assuming RX means it is some type of pharmacy type of uh, uh, immune bio ink out there. So IBRX right now. So let's first try to figure out what did this thing do when we had that uh, two real big signs of strength out there? What was it doing? A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. No, I don't really see that. So. We are trading above, or this is trading above profile. That's a bullish signal. Profile's at 709. But it's trading right now below its green oscillator and change line. That says it's lost its momentum, 841. Lost momentum doesn't guarantee that we're going to trade lower, but we are trading below yesterday's low, so that would suggest that we want to trade lower. We'll look at the intraday charts for some type of confirmation. How about on a weekly time frame? Well, it looks to me like this confirmed a sell the D point pattern, most certainly did, last week. And now you're getting follow through to the downside. This suggests to me, Bob, that what the IBRX wants to do is make its way back to support. And support would be at 691 out there. Uh, so the weekly sell the D point pattern that is in place. Um, on a monthly time frame, everything looks pretty good. So it's really the weekly chart. So how do you put this together? Well, first, before we put it all together, let's look at a 30 minute chart. Let's see what signals we have out here, if any. The signals that we have out here are nothing more than price pulling back to test two key areas of support. Those are breakout levels. The first level is at 799. We're at 805 right now. That's going to be tested. And we don't have any kind of a bottom signal. Yes, pulling back to support can be a bottom if it holds. The next bottom signal would be down at 768 out there. So I'd wait to see what's going on there. But otherwise, and does it form some type of bottom pattern like a TD9 count that could take place? You're in bar number five right now on a 30-minute basis. That's going to require another couple hours before that pattern could complete out there. Um, I think you just wanted me to take a look at it. But right now, monthly and daily, well, no, so Monthly looks pretty good, but the weekly says, I want to move lower. And that's what we saw in that 30-minute time frame chart out here. And we're losing that momentum on the daily. So I'm going to suggest right now that what IBRX wants to do is pull back further and uh, 691 being a price target. Now, because this thing has been on a roar, we can see that pullbacks. Uh, since the uh, most recent low, the most recent low I'm going to refer to is one back here 
uh, on uh, January 25th. All pullbacks have been two or three bars, and today is going to be bar number two out there. So if our IBRX is still in its real strong bullish mode out there, even though Stevie said price should pull back towards 690, we still need to be paying attention to its dance steps out there. And you're going to do that looking for clues. But I'd watch the intraday charts looking for some type of bottom signal uh, with day, today being day number two. And if we don't see that, then you might see a third day on its move lower out there. Hector and Patty would like to take a look at the GDX out there. And the GDX right now on a daily time frame, Hector, is going to form bar number eight. In order for a TD9 count pattern to form, the GDX tomorrow will need to close above 35.25. So you do have, and you've also got a road momentum indicator signal as we speak right now. That needs a bearish reversal candle. Price is taken on a swing point that goes back to April 12th. That swing point had volume of 71 million shares. So far for the day, we're at 9 million shares. So we're trading into a swing point that has a top. But if price closes over that, it negates that top, it being 35.74. If we close below that, you'll test a swing point on lighter volume. You know, it just says caution. That's all. The weekly chart is taking on TD9 count breakdown resistance at 3581. By the way, support for the GDX right now, 3541, followed by 3430. And the monthly chart is trading into a swing point that is resistance. That's that bearish engulfing candle, Hector and Patty from May of 2023. 476 million shares. Last month we were up with 689. That was a strong sign. So far this month, it's 217, so volume has dropped off. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, geez, I was just checking on something here. So um, what I was checking on was the uh, spot fix index. So that parabolic sardot on the bottom is at 1253, the low so far today, 1263. So watch that level. The price uh, hits 1253. Uh, that's going to be a, a bullish signal for the S&P 500, the ES Mini, and so on and so forth. So um, we don't have that screen up right now. I'm not looking at that screen. I'm looking at XYLD, and that is for Nicholas. And Nicholas wants to short this sense. But Nicholas, I'm going to suggest you hold off a day. The TD9 count pattern actually completed yesterday. And that says that the uh, key level is 4039. You're at 4038 right now. If price closes at 4040 or above, then that, that takes the signal there off. And that says no short. And you don't want to consider short until we get another pattern out there. I do see an A to B equals CD pattern. So if it were to generate a bearish reversal candle, then you know maybe you'd have something there. Yesterday is considered at this moment in time a key reversal bar. I would wait to see how this thing closes with it just hovering up. You know we've taken out yesterday's high and yesterday's low. Um, out there, and it's not really giving us a very clear signal. The weekly chart says I want to move up towards 4047 to 4048. And the monthly chart really not helping us. This is not a very liquid stock, and uh, you know about 400,000 shares that trade hands each day or so. And so the intraday charts do not help us at all. Uh, here's an example. Here's a 30-minute time frame chart. I'll just pull this over, Nicholas. Uh, so I can't really even go to the short-term time frame charts to give you any kind of message there. I would be careful on any instrument that doesn't have much liquidity and xyld is one of those so just just some food for thought let's finish off the show by looking at those intraday charts one more time those will be the intraday charts i don't know if it's the es or the nq it's going to be the es so the es we're going to take a look at the uh, one pattern that is out here right now and that's a 10 minute chart we took a look at that during the show so here you can see the confirmed td9 count top you can see a roach momentum indicator top as well for this time frame support if anybody is short is down at 5309 to 5311 you need to see it close below 5309 and by the way if you see it close above today's high 5317 and a quarter get out of dodge why because this thing will want to run like a uh, ferrari to the upside folks stay tuned for all the great programming please have a wonderful wednesday thanks so much for joining me and us and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow be safe out there and have a great day